go off to camp by Enid Blyton. Four children, Julian, tall and strong for his age, Dick, George and Anne, were busy planning a camping holiday. George was a girl, not a boy, but she would never answer to her real name, Georgina. With her freckled face and short curly hair, she really did look more like a boy than a girl. They were going with Mr Luffy, a master at the boys' school, an elderly, dreamy fellow with a passion for studying all kinds of insect life. Sleeping bag too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, he's laughing too. He's a darling. Best dog in the world, aren't you, Timmy? <laughs> it's absolutely wizard being allowed to go on a camping holiday by ourselves after the terrific adventure we had last summer. Well, we shan't be quite by ourselves. Don't forget, we've got Mr. Luffy to keep an eye on us. Pooh! Old Luffy! He won't know if we're there or not. It's more likely that we'll have to keep an eye on him. This sounds as if it will be a super holiday, living in tents, doing exactly what we like. <coughs> Old Luffy says he'll take all our things on the trailer behind his car. Anyone got the map? I'd like to take another squint at the spot where we're going. Just a few small farms, that's all. See, that's about the place we're going. On the slope is a farm where we'll get milk, eggs and butter. That's the road we go, and I suppose we strike off here. Look, where the cart track is shown. Oh, I do wish Tuesday would come. It'll come, all right. It's a lovely day for our trip. Now let's hope old Luffy has remembered it's the day we're starting off. He was due at ten and it's half past already. Listen, I think that's him now. Hello! Hello! Already, I see. Good for you. Right. Pile the things in the trailer, will you? Goodbye! Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't get into awful adventures this time. Of course they won't. I'll see to that. There are no adventures to be found on a wild and deserted moor. <laughs> Goodbye! Half past twelve already. Time we stop for lunch. Yeah, that looks a good spot. I've got sandwiches for everyone. We've brought some ginger beer and plums. Everyone finished? Yes, thank you, sir. Good. Let's be on our way again. We should be there about half past five. This is the track we take to our campsite. I shall leave the car here. I thought we'd camp over there. Right, sir. Shall we have tea first or unpack now? Ah, tea first. I brought a very good little stove for boiling and cooking things. It's lovely here. All heather and wind and sun. Is that the farm over there? The one we'll go to for eggs and things? That's Ollie's farm. It's changed hands since I was here three years ago. I hope the new people are nice. Now, did we leave something to eat for our tea? There are some sandwiches and some cake. Good girl. <laughs> Let's tuck in. That feels better. And now I suppose we better put up our tents. Come on, Dick, let's unpack the trailer. Mr Luffy, where would you like your tent put? I'll pitch my tent down there. And if you'd like to put yours up here, 
Where there's a half circle of gorse bushes, you'll be well sheltered. Right, sir. Well, that's that. Girls, here are your ground sheets and sleeping bags. Julian Squat asks. I'm going to turn in. My eyes are almost shut. Good night, all of you. Sleep well. Good night. Good night. Julian was first awake, and he wondered for a moment where he was. Then he remembered, and lay back enjoying the country sounds until he drifted off again. His next awakening was by Timmy licking his face, and the girls peering into his tent, grinning. Wake up, lazy! We've been up for ages! Do get up! We're going to find the stream and wash in it! Do you think we should wake up Mr Luffy? There's no sign of him yet. No, let him sleep. He's probably tired out with driving the car. Give us a shout when you're back from the stream. Golly, that water was cold. Mmm, and breakfast smells good. Thanks, Sam. That was great. I say, boys... Who's going to the farm each day for milk and things? Oh, one or other of us will go, Anne. Hadn't you better fry something for old Luffy now? Half the day will be gone if he doesn't get up now. I'll go and make a noise like an earwig outside his tent. Are you awake, sir? Mr Luffy, are you awake? What's up, Joe? He's not here. Where can he be? Is his bug hunting team gone? And what about his clothes? OK, his clothes are gone. And so has his bug tin. He must have slipped out early. That would be just like him. He'll come back when he's finished his hunting. Anne, can you get on with the things if Dick and I go to the farmhouse and see what food they've got? Right. You go too, George. I can manage. Take Timmy. He wants a walk. Anne soon finished her jobs then thought she would go for a walk on her own, following the little stream uphill to see where it began. She came at last to a big mound. The stream began there, gurgling out of the heathery hillside. She flung herself down on the heather and lay listening to the humming bees and trickling water. Then she heard another sound. She sat up, frightened. The noise was deep underground, rumbling and roaring. Then there came an unearthly shriek, and not far off, a great cloud of white smoke came right out of the ground and hung in the air as the rumbling noise faded. Anne leapt to her feet in panic and fled down the hillside, screaming. What's frightened you? Up there, do you see? That's a volcano, Mr. Luffy. It trembled and rumbled, and then it shot up clouds of smoke. Oh, quick, before it sends out red-hot cinders. No, no. Do you mean to tell me you don't know what that was? No, I don't. Well, under this big moor run two or three long tunnels to take trains from one valley to another. They make the rumbling noise you heard, and the sudden smoke you saw was sent up by a train below. <laughs> there are big vent holes here and there for the smoke to escape from. Oh, goodness gracious me. <laughs> I didn't even know there were trains under here. I really did think I was sitting on a volcano, Mr Luffy. <laughs> you won't tell the others, will you? They would laugh at me dreadfully. No, I won't say a word. That's our secret. And now, I think we'll go back. Hello, sir. Did you catch any good bugs? Yeah, afraid not. How is the farm? It's a nice little place. Pretty farmhouse. 
nice little dairy, and even a grand piano in the drawing room. Oh. Gracious! You wouldn't think they'd make enough money to buy a thing like that, would you? The farmer's got a fine car. Brand new. His boy showed it to us. Very interesting. I wonder how they make their money farming that bit of land. You should have seen the lorries they've got. Beauties. Old army ones, I should think. The boy said his father's going to use them for carting things to the market. What things? An old farm wagon would carry all their produce. That's what he told us. Oh, well, I've got some writing to do. What are you going to do? Go for a walk? We might as well take a picnic and go off somewhere. How about it? You won't get lost, will you? You won't get lost, Mr Luffy, will you? <laughs> oh, I know every path and... Uh... Volcano. <laughs> They had their lunch on a hilltop overlooking a vast stretch of heather. Just as they were finishing, Anne heard the same rumbling as before, and then, not far off, out spouted white smoke from the ground. George went quite pale. Timmy growled and barked furiously. The boys roared with laughter. It's all right, it's only the trains. We knew they run under the moors. I'm not frightened. It's all right, Tim, come here. I vote we go on to the next hill. Come on. Ah, we've made it. Look at that. Old derelict railway lines coming out of a tunnel. See where they end up in that yard? Let's go down and have a squint. Look, there are some old wagons on that set of lines. Let's give them a shove and set them going. Oh, no. Come on, Drew. Push. That's it. Oh, Colton. What are you doing? Ain't it bad enough to hear spook trains are running at night without hearing them in the daytime, too? <laughs> I've broken my glasses. Nobody cares about wooden legs, Sam, now. Nobody at all. Well, haven't you got tongues in your heads? Am I seeing things again, or are you there? We're here and we're real. Who are you? I'm wooden leg Sam, the watchman, see? Though what there is to watch here beats me. <laughs> you think I'm going to watch for these spook trains? Well, I'm not. Not me. What spook trains? Spook trains, I tell you. Trains that come out of that tunnel at night all by themselves. Nobody in them. But see, I'm smart. I lock myself in my hut and get under their bed. Julian, let's go. I don't like it. You clear out. I'm watchman here. They told me to chase anyone that came here. We're going. You look after your speed trains. We won't interfere with you. What did he mean? Spook trains? Does he really see them? He just imagines them. I expect being there all alone has made him think strange things. I'd hate to see a spook train. Wouldn't you, Ju? No, I'd love to see one. Wouldn't you, Dick? Shall we come one night and watch? Just to see. Come on, shall we start back? It's a funny business altogether. I wonder why the yard isn't used anymore. And where that tunnel leads to. I expect there's quite an ordinary explanation. It's just that wooden leg sand makes it all seem so weird. Perhaps the boy at the farm would know. Gosh, I'd love to go and watch for one. I wish you wouldn't talk like that. It makes me feel as if you want another adventure. And I don't. Well, there won't be another adventure, so don't worry. And anyway, if there was an adventure, you could always go and hold old Luffy's hand. You'd be quite safe with him. Look! Who's that up there? Shepherd or something. Good afternoon. Have you seen any of my sheep down along there? No. We've been down in the railway yard, and we'd have seen any sheep on the slope below. Oh, don't you go down there. That's a bad place, that is. We've been hearing about spook trains. Is that what you mean? Aye. That tunnel hasn't been used for 30 years. But the trains, they still come out of it, just as they used to. How do you know? Have you seen them? No, I've only heard them. They jangle and clank. Old wooden leg Sam reckons they're spook trains. Don't you go down to that place. 
It's bad and scary. Not a tale. I don't believe in spook trains. Dick, have you got the tea in your bag? Will you join us, Shepherd? No, thank you kindly. I'll be after my sheep. Good day, sir. And don't go down to that bad place. Give me the bag, Dick. Thanks. Salvage anyone? Oh, Timmy, come out of that rabbit hole. Timmy, the rabbit's miles away. He's looking for a spook train. <laughs> <laughs> Any more cake, Am? Not a scrap of anything. What? I'm starving. Come on, let's go back for supper. Julian, you've eaten more than anyone. I'm bigger than anyone. Come on, quick march. Ah. Home at last. Hello. Had a nice walk? Yes. Except we met a strange one-legged man who told us he saw spook trains. <laughs> well, well. He must be a cousin of a little girl I know who thought she was sitting on a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> You're not to tease me. No, honestly, Mr Luffy, this old man was a watchman at a sort of railway yard. Well, well it all sounds most interesting. But these exciting stories usually have a very tame explanation. I hope so. George, help me to get supper. Thanks, girls. I feel quite human again. It'll be a nice day tomorrow. What shall we do? We'll have to go to the farm first. <sighs> Timmy, I could see right down to your tail then. Do shut your mouth up. You've made us all yawn. Well, I'm going to turn in. We'll make plans tomorrow morning. Good night. Come on, time we turned in. Good night, girls. The next day, the children were up very early, as early as Mr Luffy, and they all had breakfast together. I think I'll go off for the whole day. What are you four going to do? We'll go over to the farm and get more food. Right. Now, don't worry if I'm not back till dusk. When I'm bug hunting, I lose count of time. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Luffy. Ready, everyone? Then let's go. That's a farm boy by the shed. Have you come for some more eggs? You didn't come yesterday. What's your name? Anne. What's yours? Jock. Have you always lived on a farm? Aren't you lucky? I've only lived on two. Owl Farm and this one. Mum and I had to leave Owl Farm when Dad died. But I thought your father was here. Oh, that's my stepfather. He's no farmer, though. It's my mother that tells the men what to do. Still... It gives her plenty of money to do everything well. And we've got fine machinery and wagons and things. Like to see the dairy. Mum loves working in it. Ah, oh, good morning. You're hungry again. I'll pack you plenty of food when I've finished in the dairy. Would you like to stay and have dinner with my jock? He's lonely enough here in the holidays. Oh, yes. Do that. I'd like that. Can we do... Yes, thank you very much. Mrs, um, Mrs... I'm Mrs Andrews. Come on, I'll take you all round the farm. You've got plenty of men here to work on the farm. I shouldn't have thought there was enough for so many to do in this small place. Oh, they're not good workers. Mum's always getting wild at them. They just don't know what to do. Dad gives her plenty of men to work on the farm, but he always chooses the wrong ones. They don't seem to like farm work, and they're always running off to the nearest town whenever they can. Where's your stepfather? He's away for the day, thank goodness. Why? Don't you like him? Oh, he's all right. But he's not a farmer. And what's more, he doesn't like me one bit. I try to like him for Mum's sake, but I'm always glad when he's out the way. Your mother's nice. Oh, hi, Mum's grand. You don't know what it means to her to have a little farm of her own again. This is our biggest farm. I told you what was in here before. Lorries. You can peek through the hole here at them. I don't know why my stepfather wanted to buy so many. 
I reckon they weren't bought for the farm at all. Good dinner! I'd never have such a lovely dinner in my life. Smashing! I'll go and have a rest now. Talk to Jock. He doesn't have enough company of his own age. Shall we sit by this haystack? Let's ask Jock about the spook trains. Spook trains? I've never heard of them. Haven't you really? No. Tell me about them. Well, I'll tell you what we know. Yesterday we found a deserted railway yard, guarded by an old man with a wooden leg. He said something about spook trains that go in and out of the tunnel at night. It was all very odd. Cool. I wish I'd been with you. This was quite an adventure you had. I've never had a single adventure in my life. Have you? Yes, we've had heaps of adventures. We've been down in dungeons, lost in caves, we've found secret passages, looked for treasure. I can't tell you what we've done. Tell me. Go on. They began to tell Jock about their many adventures. His eyes almost fell out of his head whenever they came to an exciting part. I see. Do you think you'll have one here? No. Whatever kind of adventure would there be on these moorlands? What about those spook trains? I'd like to go down to that old railway yard with you. Well, I don't know that we mean to go again. What about going down there one night and watching for a spook train? No. Well, you needn't come. Just us three boys. And me. I'm as good as any boy and I'm not going to be left out. Well, if we do go there again, we'll tell you. That'll be terrific, thank you. Spook trains. I say, just suppose we really did see one. Who'd be driving it? Where would it come from? Out of the tunnel, wooden leg Sam says. But I don't see how we'd spot it, except by the noise it made. Because apparently the spook trains only arrive in the dark of night, never in the daytime. We wouldn't see much, even if we were there. Tea, would you believe it? That's Mr Andrews coming back. Would you like us to go, Mrs Andrews? Oh, no, you can stay. Mr Andrews came in. He wasn't in the least like they had imagined him to be. He was a short, dark little man with a weak face and a nose much too big for it. Hello, dear. Jock's got his friends here. Well, Jock, had a good day. Yes, thanks. I say, do you know anything about spook trains, sir? Spook trains? What are you talking about? Well, Julian says there's an old deserted railway yard and spook trains are supposed to come out of the tunnel at night. Well, to think you've heard of those spook trains. Gee, they really are true, then. You tell me all you know. Oh, there's nothing really to tell, sir. You tell it me, and I'll tell you a few things. And I tell you, you won't go near that old railway yard again. No, that you won't. Go on, tell me all you know. Well, we found an old deserted railway yard. There was a funny old watchman there who talked about spook trains. Now, you listen to me. Don't any of you ever go down to that yard again. It's a bad place. Why? What do you mean, a bad place? Oh, things have happened there. Years ago. Accidents. It was all shut up after that and the tunnel wasn't used anymore, see? Nobody was allowed to go there and nobody did because they were scared. But, Mr Andrews, you don't mean there really are spook trains, do you? That's just what I do mean. Spook trains come and go. They might take you away, see? Oh, not as bad as that, sir, surely. Anyway, you're frightening Anne. So let's change the subject. Wooden Leg Sam was right to hide himself when they come along. Mrs Andrews, thank you very much for a lovely day. We must go now. Come along, Anne. Wait a minute. I just want to warn you all very solemnly that you mustn't go down to that railway yard. You hear me, Jock? You're not to go near it. Well, thank you for the warning, sir. We'll be going. Goodbye, Mrs Andrews. Goodbye, Jock. Come along tomorrow and have a picnic with us, will you? Thanks. Yes, I will. Uh, but wait a minute. Aren't you going to take any food with you? <laughs> yes, of course they are. You not go on. I'll catch you up. You come to the scullery with me, Julian. 
there we are. You can let me have the basket back later. Thank you very much. How much do I owe you? Oh, that's all right. Pay me later. Thank you. Goodbye. I caught you. My stepfather was pretty scary about those trains, wasn't he? I shan't go down to that yard again, ever. Will you, George? If the boys did, I would. Are you going to the yard again? It would be an adventure to go and watch for a spook train. We might go. We'll take you with us if we do. I'd better go back now. I'll come up tomorrow. Bye. Are we going down to the yard again? Yes, I think so. I'm not going to be scared off it by weird warnings from Pa Andrews. And I vote we go one night and see if a spook train comes along. I shall come too. No, you won't. You'll stay with Anne. I wonder where old Luffy is. Do you think I'd better wait up and see if he wants something to eat? No, he'll be all right. I'm going to turn in. Coming, Dick? Mr Luffy slept very late the next morning, and nobody liked to disturb him. The five were eating their breakfast, waiting for Jock to arrive. I wonder what time Jock will come up. He ought to know some fine walks. Yes. We'll tell him he's to be our guide. Will someone help me with the washing up so that I'm ready too? I will. That chance the boys will deign to. Oh well, if you don't want our help... Come on, Dick. Let's tidy up our tent. Oh, look, Dick. Old Luffy's stirred at last. I wonder if he'd like some breakfast. Breakfast? It's just about lunchtime. Good morning, sir. Did you sleep well? Oh, yes, very well, thank you. I thought your friend Jock was coming up today. So did we, but there's been no sign of him. We were hoping he'd show us somewhere nice to walk. I made up a picnic lunch to take. I think we'd better eat it here. We can't go anywhere in case he comes. What a wasted day. Seven o'clock and all we've done is hang about. Hello, children. No sign of your friend. <laughs> Never mind, I expect he'll come tomorrow. Let's hope so. We're going to have a game of cards. Would you like to join us? Yes, I think I will. <laughs> Can you play rummy? Oh, yes. That's my favourite game. Let's cut the cards then to see who deals. Rummy. I won! Oh, not again. Goodness me. I haven't won once. Now it's getting so dark I can hardly see the cards. I think I shall have to admit defeat and go to bed. That sounds like a good idea. Me too. <laughs> good night to all of you. Good, good night. night. I feel really snug. Night, Dick. Dick! It's Jock here. Can I come in? Jock? Julian? Here's Jock and Timmy. I'm sorry I didn't come today. My stepfather suddenly announced he wanted me to go with him for the whole day. I can't think why. That was mean of him. Was it important? No, not at all. Never mind. Come tomorrow instead. I can't. He's arranged for me to meet the son of a friend of his, a boy called Cecil Dearlove. Oh, blow. Well, what about the next day? I've a feeling I'll have dear love of a Cecil plonked on me for the day. It's bad luck, it really is. I thought I'd better come and tell you. I've brought some food for you, by the way. Well, if you can't come tomorrow, or the next day, what about tomorrow night, about this time? We'll just go off by ourselves, we three boys, and watch. Bring a torch, and don't say a word to anyone. Rather not. Well, I suppose I'd better be going... I've left the food outside the tent. Right. Thanks awfully. Good night. I'll just go and hide the food in Anne's gorse bush larder. Look at this. Meat pies? Eggs? Wherever did they come from? Spook train brought them in the night. Tell me how they came here. George, do you know? I bet Jock was here last night. I think they've planned something together. You won't trick me, Dick and Julian. Wherever you go, I go too. The day passed pleasantly. 
The children, Timmy and Mr Luffy, all went off to a pool high up on the moorlands. They arrived home at the camp about tea time. As the evening came on, Julian and Dick felt excitement rising in them. The boys said goodnight and snuggled down in their sleeping bags. We shall have a bit of starlight to see by. It's going to be fun. Julian, Dick, I'm here. Are you ready? Hello, Jock. How did you like Cecil, dear love? Awful. The frightful thing is, I've got to have him from the day tomorrow. Oh, don't let's talk about it. Are you ready? Yes. We didn't tell the girls. I don't want George to leave Anne by herself. Which is the way? Over there? If we make for that hill you can dimly see over there against the starlit sky, we should be going in the right direction. It seems much further by night. Surely we must be nearly there by now. Yes, we are. Down there. That's the old yard. You can see the lines gleaming. Look! There's a light down there. I think I know what it is. The light in the watchman's hut. Old wooden leg Sam's candle. Yes, you're right. We'll creep down into the yard and see if old Sam is there. Then we'll hide and wait for the spook train to come. The window's so dirty, I can hardly see a thing. Oh, look! His wooden leg is on the chair. See? He's not expecting the spook train tonight, or he wouldn't have taken off his wooden leg. Are there many lines in this yard? Where do they go to? About a half a mile or so up there is a tunnel. The lines come from there and run here. Oh, let's go up the lines to the tunnel. There's nothing to be seen here. All right, we may as well. I don't expect we'll see much up there either. I think these spook trains are all a tall story of old Sam's. Let's walk along the lines. I say, listen, can you hear that? Yes, but it's only a train going through one of the underground tunnels. It isn't. That noise is made by a train coming through this tunnel. Quick, get off the line! Well, there you are, the spook train, without a light or a signal. Where's it gone? To the yard, do you think? Shall we go and see? I didn't see anyone in the cab, even in the glow of what must have been the fire. But there must have been someone driving it. I say, what a weird thing, isn't it? It sounded real enough anyway. We'll go to the yard. Come on. No, oh, I've twisted my ankle. Half a minute. You're all right, old chap. Sit down and take your weight off it. Here, let me rub it for you. How does that feel? That's fine. Sorry to be so long. It's all right now, I think. I can walk on it. Slowly. Now we'll go to the yard and see what's happening. It's coming back again. Stand still. Watch. It'll be going back into the tunnel. Well, there you are. There is a spook train. It came and went. Where from and where to, nobody knows. But we've heard it and seen it in the darkness of the night. And jolly creepy it was too. If only I hadn't twisted my ankle, we could have followed the train down the lines to the yard and have gone quite close to it. What an ass I am, messing up things at the most exciting moment. Oh, you couldn't help it. I say, we've seen the spook train. Is it a real train? Judging by the noise it made, it's real, all right. All the same, it's jolly strange. Let's go back. Shall we tell the girls? No. George would be furious if she knew we'd gone without her. Here we are. Your camp. Goodbye, Jock. Looks as if Timmy is going to escort you. Goodbye. See you soon.
there to me. What's the matter, old boy? Burglars? Well, that's odd. There's a light in the barn. Come on, Timmy, quietly now. Shh, let's have a look. Ow! Let go of me! It's you, Joe. What are you doing out here at this time of night? Peters! Well, what are you doing? What's it to do with you? I had a breakdown in the lorry and I've only just got back. Look here, you're fully dressed. Did you hear me come in and get up to see what was happening? You never know. You just never know. Ah, I'm off home. Well, Timmy, I must go to bed. Oh. Off you go. Good dog. After an uneasy sleep, Jock was glad to wake in the morning and immediately began to plan how to slip off to the camp after breakfast. Can I take a basket of stuff up to the campers? What time is Cecil coming? Perhaps there's time. I don't want him running off up there. Cecil may be here at any minute. Hello? Um, what shall we play at? Soldiers? Oh, no. Red Indians. I've got a smashing red Indian suit. I won't be long. See you in the yard. Oh, all right. Red Indians for... Ugh. Soldiers is much better. Who wants to play silly Red Indians, anyway? Eee! Filthy! I'm going to scalp you! No! No! Go away! Leave me alone! <laughs> Jock, is that you? Goodness, look at his war paint. Oh, no wonder that boy was afraid. Hello. I'm just having a quiet time with dear Cecil. Hello, Timmy. Did you get back all right last night? What happened last night? Oh, I, I just came up for a talk with the boys. Uh, and Timmy walked back with me. You're keeping something from me. I know you are. I believe you went to the railway yard last night. Did you? Go on, tell me. You beasts. You never woke me up to go with you. Did you see anything? Well... Your father wants you. You're to go home at once. You're a beast and I want to go home. Can't you hear your father yelling for you? He's got a stick, but I'm not sorry for you. I hope he whacks you hard. Oh dear. What tales have you been telling? I'd better go. Here's Mrs Andrews coming. Good morning, Mrs Andrews. I'm sorry, I can't ask you to stop. Jock has behaved very, very foolishly. I've sent him to bed. Here is some food for you to take. Goodbye. Look, Mr Andrews is going. That's Jock's bedroom, I think. Where the pear tree is. Let's have a word with him. Jock! Hello. He didn't whack me. Mum wouldn't let him. Where's dear Cecil? I don't know, Jock. If things are difficult in the daytime, come up at night. Right. Where's George? Sulking behind the haystack. We shall have an awful day with her now. You let the cat properly out of the bag. Aye, I'm a ninny. So long, have a nice day. Come on, Dick, there's George. How dare you go off without me when I told you I meant to come? I think you're absolute beasts. I never really thought you'd do a thing like that. Don't be silly, George. I told you we didn't mean to let you and Anne go. I'll tell you all what happened, and it's pretty thrilling. What? Tell me quickly. We went down to the deserted yard, and old wooden leg Sam was in his hut. He'd taken his wooden leg off. It really looked quite odd. Then suddenly a train came out of the tunnel. We were going to see where it went, but poor old Dick twisted his ankle. By the time he was fit to walk again, the train came back and disappeared into the tunnel, and that was the last we saw of it. Well, there you are. Sorry you weren't there too, George, but I didn't want to leave Anne all alone. I suppose Timmy went with you. I think that was horrid of him. Oh, don't be silly. Fancy being angry with old Tim. Anyway, he didn't come with us. Oh, at least Timmy was loyal to me, that's something. George, there's no need to be cross with me too. I haven't done anything. 
If you weren't such a little coward, I'd have been able to go too. Shut up, George. You're being horrid. I'm astonished at you. And I'm astonished at you, after all the adventures we've had together. But you will let me come next time, won't you, Julian? What? After your frightful behaviour today? Certainly not. Come on, Dick. Let's go and see old Luffy. Oh, hello. Come to talk to me? Yes. Could I have a look at that map of yours, Mr Luffy? The big one you've got of these moorlands? Oh, of course. It shows the railways that run under the moorlands too, doesn't it? Yes, just hang on. I'll get it out of the tent. Ah, yes, here it is. Oh, look. I say, there. A day flying moth. Yes, I must see if I can catch it. Thanks, sir. Um, good luck. Here we are, Dick. Look. The dotted lines are the tunnels. And that's the one the spook train came out of. It either runs through its own tunnel to the valley there, or it turns off into this fork and runs along to the other valley. I'll tell you what we'll do, Dick. We'll get Mr Luffy to run us down to the nearest town to buy something. And we'll slip along to the station and see if we can't make a few inquiries about these two tunnels. Good idea. Ah, oh, here's old Luffy coming back. Any luck, sir? Oh, afraid not. <laughs> Dinner's ready. Thank you, Anne. That was very good. Mm. Well, if anyone wants to come to town this afternoon, I'll be starting in 15 minutes. I'll come. Will you come too, George? No, I'm going for a walk with Timmy. Here we are. Now, I'm going to the library. We'll meet in that hotel at five o'clock and have some tea. All right, sir. Thank you for the lift. Come on, you two. Let's find the station. There's the station. Let's ask that porter. I say, could you help us? We're camping on the moorlands, and we're quite near a deserted railway yard with lines that run into an old tunnel. Why isn't the yard used anymore? Oh, don't know. You should ask old Tucky there. He knows all the tunnels under the moors like the back of his hand. Thanks. Excuse me, I've been told that you know all about the moorland tunnels. They must be very interesting. Ah, my father and grandfather built those tunnels. I've oh, been a guard on all the trains that ran through them. There's a tunnel near where we're camping, not far from Ollie's farm. We came across an old deserted railway yard with lines that led into a tunnel. Do you know it? Oh, yes, that's an old tunnel. Hasn't been used for many a long year. Nor the yard, either. The tunnel joins another, doesn't it? Just you wait a minute. I've got an old map inside. I'll get it. Here we are. Now, that's the yard, see? It was called Ollie's Yard. Here's a tunnel. It runs right through to Kilty Vale. Here's where it used to join the tunnel to Roker's Vale. But that was bricked up years ago. Something happened there. The roof fell in, I think it was. I suppose no trains run through the tunnel from Kilty Vale to Ollie's Yard now, then? <laughs> There's been no engine through that tunnel since I was a young man. Thank you very much indeed for your help. That's all right. Here, you can keep the old map. Ain't no use to me anymore. Oh, thanks. This'll be jolly useful. Come on, you two. Let's go and find a seat in that park until it's time to meet Mr Luffy. This will do. It's jolly strange. No trains run there now, and the tunnel's not been used for ages, and Ollie's yard's derelict. And yet there appear to be trains that come and go. Then they must be spook trains. Looks like it. True. I know what we'll do. We'll wait one night till we see the spook train come out of the tunnel to the yard. Then one of us can sprint to the other end of the tunnel and wait for it to come out the other side. Jolly good idea. What about tonight? George hadn't come back from her walk when they reached the camp. At last she appeared with Timmy, looking tired out. She was apologetic for her bad temper that morning, and everyone forgave her and went to bed. Julian and Dick stayed awake and set off at midnight. 
Just as they reached the yard, they heard a train coming. Quick, Dick. You sprint off to the tunnel opening and watch for the train to go back in again. I'll find my way to the other end and see if it vanishes into thin air or what. Oh, at last, there's Kilty's yard. Hope I'm in time. Ah, there's the tunnel. Must go in and take a peek. See if it is bricked up. Strange. No sign of any bricking up here. Better go a bit further. Not a sign. No sign of the train either. Got the time. Dick will wonder where I've got to. Better get back. You have been ages. The spook train went back into the tunnel ages ago. Went back into the tunnel? Well, it never came out the other side. I suppose the entrance to that second tunnel is really bricked up. If it wasn't, the train could go down there. Yes, that's the only solution. Well, we can't go exploring now. Let's do it in daylight. I've had enough tonight. Come on, let's go back. The two boys went back to the camp. In the morning, George was furious. She could hardly believe that once again they had gone without her. Fortunately for everyone, Jock arrived, rather subdued. Hello, Jock. Just in time for a spot of breakfast. Sit down and join us. I can't. I've only got a few minutes. Listen, isn't it rotten? I'm to go away and stay with my stepfather's sister for two weeks. You'll be gone when I get back, won't you? Yes, but why have you got to go away? Oh, I don't know. Mum won't say. My stepfather's in a frightful temper. It's my opinion they want me out of the way for some reason. Well, come and stay with us. I say... That's a great idea. Right, I'll come. I'll go and let Mum into the secret and hope she'll square things with my step aunt. Hey, Anne, where's George gone? I'm not sure. Timmy's gone too. I suppose she's taken him for a walk. Phew. Well, I had hard work to persuade Mum, but she said yes at last. Hello, Mr Luffy. You've been out early. Ah, is this your friend from the farm? How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Come to spend a few days with us. I see you have an armful of rugs. Yes, Jock's going to camp a bit with us. Well, I'm going to go through my specimens this morning. What's the matter, Jock? That's my stepfather's whistle. He's whistling for me. He's found out I've come over here. Quick, let's hide. If you're not here... He can't take you back. Good idea. Come on, down there where the heather's thick. Down, Anne, lie flat. Jock, Jock, come here at once. I want you now. Eh, you that Mr Luffy you've heard about. Where's Jock? I really do not know. He's got to come back. I won't have him hanging around with those kids. What's wrong with them? Now look here, I'd better warn you. They're running into danger. Really? In what way? There's bad and dangerous places about these moorlands. That railway yard now, that's a most dangerous place. Uh, you seem very concerned about this uh, railway yard. Me? Oh, no, no, never been near the horrible place. It's just that I don't want Jock to get into danger. Quite. Quite, quite. Uh, I'll find him, I will. Huh? Good morning to you. He's gone. Please send Jock here so that I can address a few words to him. I quite understand why you want to be away from your stepfather, and I consider it no business of mine where you go in order to get away from him. Oh, thanks awfully. I thought you were going to send me back. It's all right. I'm going to stay. What about going and exploring that tunnel after lunch? Good idea. George had taken Timmy and gone off to find out something about that mysterious tunnel. She soon came to Ollie's yard with wooden leg Sam pottering about. He jumped violently when she called to him. You 
clear off. I've been told to keep you children out. Who told you? He did, see? Who's he? You clear out. You don't want to get me into trouble. Oh, very well. Come on, Timmy. We'll go up this path. That'll take us over the tunnel. Perhaps we can find the other end. I say, Timmy, what's this funny-looking bump in the ground? Oh. How very odd. Let's have a closer look. If I just clear this heather away, we'll be able to see. Good boy, Timmy. You scratch away like that and we'll soon solve the mystery. Oh. Timmy, where are you? Oh, no. This must be one of those vent holes to let the smoke out. The old iron bars from the grid have rusted away. No wonder poor old Timmy fell in. It's so dark. Can't see a thing down there. If I just feel with my feet, yes, something there. And there's another one, a bit lower. Oh, wonderful. It's a sort of ladder. I'm coming, Timmy. I'm coming. Sorry, boy. I didn't mean to tread on you. What are you lying on? These must be the old bars that have fallen in. Oh, Timmy, how ever am I going to get you out? The only thing I can think of is to climb down. I might find an old rope. <sighs> Made it. Thank goodness I brought my torch. Oh, no. It must be... The spook train! <coughs> Timmy, are you hurt? Oh, Timmy, say something! <coughs> oh, Timmy, what a bit of luck for you. Trust you to find a nice soft pile of soot to fall on. Now, where are you going? Timmy, careful! That's the spook train. Oh, well... If you can be brave, so can I. Let's have a look in the trucks it's got behind. Come on, up you come. Look, Timmy, it's full of boxes. I wonder what's in them. Oh, whoever turned that light on? Down, Timmy, hide. Good. There's a nice big crack in the side. Golly, this must be where the tunnel forks. I bet that goes to Kilty's yard. But look at that, Timmy, behind us. This line runs straight into a brick wall. Timmy, look. I don't believe it. The wall's opening. Coming. We're moving, Timmy. We're going backwards. We, we're going right through the hole in the wall. What's happening to us? Where are we? Gosh, it's just like a great big king. Oh, Timmy, all those men. Let me have another look. No, there's another wall in front of us. We'll have to wait till the men have gone away, Timmy. Then we'll see if we can manage that open sesame entrance and get away. Jock was so pleased to be with the others as they went off to the old railway yard. Wooden Leg Sam wasn't at all pleased when they arrived, and he shook his fist at them. You clear out! Well, we won't go down. We'll just walk along to the tunnel. Now we're going to walk right through and see where the spook train is. It must be in the middle. If it's the spook train, it might disappear. Look, this is where the tunnel forks. Yes, it's well bricked up. That only leaves this tunnel to explore. 
Come on. That's it. This is Kilty's yard, or what's left of it. Look at all the weeds and broken down sheds. Well, no train has been out of this tunnel here for years. It's extraordinary. We've been right through the tunnel and there's no train. Yet we know it goes in and out. A a spook train. It must be. I don't like thinking that. What are we going to do now? Well, let's walk back again. I'm not coming through that tunnel again. I'll walk over the top path and meet you at the other end. Right. Anne ran along the path, got to the other end of the tunnel and sat down to wait for the others, when something surprising happened. A car came down the rough track to the yard. A man got out. It was Mr Andrews. Then a heavy lorry came down the track. Three men, labourers at Jock's farm, came out. Mr Andrews joined the men and they began to walk up to the tunnel. Anne's heart almost stopped. Julian, Dick and Jock were still in that tunnel. What could she do? She waited. Nobody came out of the tunnel. Anne at last decided to go down and ask Wooden Leg Sam a few questions. Sam was in his hut, and when he saw Anne, he got up. What, you children here again? I telephoned Mr Andrew to come and catch you all. You come here and I'll get one of you. No! Don't touch me! I must find Mr Luffy and tell him I must! I must! Mr Luffy! Oh, Mr Luffy, where are you? Oh, thank goodness! There's our gorse bushes at last! Mr Luffy! Mr Luffy! Oh, no! I was sure they were our bushes. Oh, it's not our camp at all! Where am I? Oh, where am I? In the meantime, what had happened to the three boys walking back through the tunnel? They had gone slowly, examining the lines to see if a train could have run along them recently. When they came about halfway, Julian noticed an interesting thing. Look, the lines are rusty behind us. But here, this pair of lines is quite bright. That's funny. Looks as if the spook train only ran from here to Ollie's yard and back. Let's go to the mouth of the tunnel and see if the lines are bright all the way. Well, I think... Oh, I've got you. Oh, I've got this one. No, you don't, kid. Look here, what's all this about? Take them all away. Mr Andrews, is that you? Set us free. What do you think you're doing? Quiet, you. Go on, lads. Take them into the caves. No, right. leave us alone. Right, I'll open up. In you go. What's all this about? You was warned not to go down to that yard. You've got to suffer now for taking no heed of that warning. You'll be tied up and left here till we've finished our business. Maybe three days, maybe three weeks. You can't keep us prisoner for all that time. Search parties will be sure to find us. No, oh, no, they won't. Nobody will find you here. Now, Peter, just tie them up. What are you doing this for? We don't know a thing about your business. We're not taking any chances. What about Mum? She'll be worried. Let her be worried. It's your own fault. You was warned. Sounds as if they've gone. The brutes. Whatever are they up to? They've got some secret to hide. What's going to happen? Shh, I can hear something. It's a dog whining. Timmy! I say, Dick, it's Timmy. Where did he come from? Where's George, then? Here! Whatever happened? Were you captured or something? Yes, but George, where are we? And what are you doing here, too? Hold my torch. I'll cut your ropes first before I explain. Thanks, George. Where are we? Gracious, is that an engine there? That, Julian, is the spook train. Really? But we walked all the way down the tunnel without finding it. Listen, you. You know where the second tunnel is bricked up? Well, a whole bit of it moves back in a sort of open sesame manner. The spook train can run through and the hole is closed again. 
There are two walls across the second tunnel, with a big space in between where the spook train hides. Why should anyone mess about with a spook train at night? That's what we've got to find out. Look at all the caves. They make wonderful hiding places. Swing your torch round and let's see these caves. Look, there's a switch over there. Let's try it. Let there be light, smashing. Good for you, Jock. Come on, let's look at these caves. Look here, crates of tea, whiskey and brandy. Boxes and boxes of stuff. This is a real black market hiding place. All stolen, I suppose. They steal it, pile it on the lorries at night, take it somewhere temporarily. Yes, to my mother's farm. All those lorries in the barn. That's what they're used for. They come down to Ollie's yard at night, load it on the train, then it's taken back here and hidden. You're right, Jock. What a cunning plot. Your stepfather must make a lot of money at this game. Oh, poor mum. This will break her heart. All the same, I don't think he's the chief one in this. There's somebody behind him. Yes, there probably is. Now, there must be a way out somewhere. And if there is, we'll find it. Jew, come here. Look at this lever. I wonder if this has got anything to do with it. Come on, Dick, give me a hand. Open sesame! Better switch the light off. If there's anyone still in the tunnel, they might see it. Come on, we'll make for Ollie's yard. We'd better go as quietly as we can. Stop, everyone. I can hear someone coming. Other way, quick! They'll see the hole in the wall is open. They'll come down to find us, and here we'll be. Julian, we could climb up that vent I came down. Where is the vent? Quick, find it! Just a sec. It's not far. Here it is. But how can we take Timmy? We can't. We must hope he'll manage to hide and then slink out of the tunnel by himself. You first, George. Lead the way. Go on, Dick. Now you, Jock. I'll follow you. Quick, there's a light. Who's opened the hole in the wall? These kids can't have moved the lever. We've bound them tightly. I've gone. My ropes are cut. They must be about here somewhere. Or hiding in the caves. Peters, go and look while we hunt here. What's up, George? There's some iron bars falling across this vent. I can't go any higher. Blow! I wish I'd gone up first. What are we to do now? As evening came, and then darkness, Mr. Luffy became very worried about the five children. He decided to get his car and go over to Ollie's farm. Mrs. Andrews came running out. Oh, it's you, Mr. Luffy. Something strange is happening. All the men have gone, and all the lorries. My husband has taken the car. And nobody will tell me anything. I'm so worried. Don't worry. You'll find things are all right in the morning, I expect. Now, I must be off on an urgent matter. Ah, I did remember where it was. Thought so. The police station. Just where I thought. Good evening, Sergeant. I'm afraid I need your help. Oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Well, I'm camping nearby with four children, and they've gone missing. They've become friends with a boy who lives at Ollie's farm, at Mr Andrew's place. I know they've been exploring an old deserted railway yard. I think that's called Ollie's too, Ollie's yard. There didn't seem to be any harm in that. I'm sure you know what children are like, but they should have been back by now. I haven't seen them since this morning. I have to find those kids, and we'll have to look into this Ollie's farm business, sir. We've known there was something funny going on, but we'll find the children first. Brown, I want you and five men in a car out front. Now. Right, sir. You take your car and we'll meet you at Ollie's yard. Goodness, I'm sure that's Anne. Anne, over here. Oh, Mr. Luffy, you must save the boys. They're in the tunnel, and they've been caught by Mr. Andrews and his men, I'm sure. They didn't come out, and I waited and waited. Do come. I've got...
got some friends here who will come and help. Sergeant? What is it, sir? Anne here was with them earlier. She's sure they've been caught by Andrews and his mob in the tunnel. Right. You follow us. Come on, men. Into the tunnel. Follow me. Are you all right, Anne? Yes, Mr Luffy. Now I've found you. Good. Let's follow the policeman. Here they are, up this vent. Come on down or it'll be the worst for you. Hey, let go of my foot. I'm slipping. Ow, steady on. All right, let go of me. I'm coming. Come on, Jock. It's no use. They've got us. Giving us a chase like this. Who undid your ropes? Someone else is coming down. Who's this then? Another boy? Where did he come from? Any more up there? Look and see. Treat them rough now. Teach them a lesson. Take them away. Police, run for it. Yeah. I tell you, the police are coming. You're right. Are you deaf? There's a whole crowd of them. Run for it. Get along to Kildy's yard. We can get cars there. Timmy, where are you? After them, Timmy, stop them. <laughs> I went back to tell Mr. Luffy about you, and I got lost. I'm so ashamed. Oh, you've nothing to be ashamed of, Anne. You're a grand girl, brave as a lion. Well, I'm blowed. That dog's caught the lot of them. Good boy. OK, lads, put the bracelets on them. <laughs> Not me. Oh, let me go. It wasn't me. Let me go. Shut up. We know you're only the cat's paw, taking money from the big men. Well, I don't think I ever in my life saw dirtier children. I vote I drive the lot of you over to Honest Farm for a meal and a bath. I wouldn't worry over much, Mrs Andrews. Oh. That husband of yours needs a lesson, you know. Aye. This will probably keep him going straight in future. I think Jock will be happier. Uh, you're right, Mr Luffy. I'll let Jock help me with the farm. To think that Mr Andrews was in with all those black marketeers. He knew Jock was snooping about in that tunnel, and that's why he wanted him to go away. No wonder he was worried when Jock took it into his head to camp with our little lot. <laughs> Aye. Their bath's ready now. I'll get them into the tub. Mr. Luffy, do come up and have a look. Well, I never. <laughs> Fast asleep, the lot of them. <laughs> have you ever seen such a scruffy lot? Talk about black marketeers. <laughs> I'll have to wake them or their meal will be spoiled. <laughs> They all woke up, had a bath and a good meal, then back to the camp with Mr Luffy and Jock. It was glorious to snuggle down into the sleeping bags. George called out to the three boys. Now don't you dare go off without me tonight. The adventure is over. How did you like it, Jock? Like it? It was simply smashing. 